Hello folks, welcome to day uh, 23 of the uh, November Daily Material Challenge. I'm just going to quickly add my tick for yesterday because I forgot, boom, yesterday was City. Uh, right, before we carry on, I'm going to quickly go and check my stream is actually working with the mic working and all that good stuff because... I, I know so many people... That shush, Billy. It's all that good stuff because sometimes I get a stuttery microphone, I don't know why, I think it's to do with the Windows 10 drivers and it drives me a little bit crackers. Drivers and it drives me a little bit crackers. Drivers, Sounds okay to me now though. Sounds oh. okay to me now though. Yeah, all that doubling up. It's magic in it. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, um, welcome. Yesterday I did not stream what I was working on, but I did obviously do the work and I'll show you now what I was up to. So yesterday's, um, yesterday's prompt was city. And my idea was I'm going to make like a paper craft kind of paper theater kind of style city a little stacked one so i've got a bunch of reference images together as you can see here got a bunch of different things together and i really liked it and i thought in order to save time i actually wanted to do liverpool skyline um, but it's really quite complex when you look at all the shapes you have to make and in the hour uh, in the two hour window we'd normally have that's not really that doable so i thought let's keep it simple i'll just replicate one of the images that i find that i like and that way i've not got to spend time thinking about what to do next i've just got to make stuff if that makes sense uh, and i did this one pretty much not exactly the same obviously i've i messed some bits up i mean yeah I, uh you have that tattooed yeah, you do um yeah so i thought i'll just grab something quick and colorful and not simple but like looks simple to do looks nice so i went for this one uh which i did yesterday and then this is the result that i got so let me just make this bigger for you yeah so this was this was yesterday's so it's not perfect, but it was good enough for the time. And also did it in an hour 15 instead of two hours because I wanted to get it done quickly. I was tired. And so I think it went pretty well considering. I mean, about halfway through, I thought this isn't going to get done in time. But then boom, it happened. So sometimes that works out well. Now today's prompt, let me just clear this out a second. Close that and we'll go to today's prompt. Today's is sign. And I thought, you know what? I'd never seen it, but the film Signs it says sign right there, doesn't it? And I thought it'd be cool if we recreate this poster, or, you know, this part of it anyway, with, like, the, the field and then the shapes cut out of it. We can do that. I'm pretty sure we can do that, uh, at least to a simple degree. So what I'm probably going to do is have this on the page, like, three times, so that it makes a square. But I think we'll give that a bash. It's not going to go great, but it's going to be fun, and that's what matters. We're just doing this for fun right now. So I think we should just crack on. But first things first, we need to reset our timer. So we've got two hours on the clock as of now. Awesome. So how you doing, mate? You okay? Have you had a nice evening? All uh, right, so first step, I'm going to get the shapes in place. I love this playlist. I can listen to it all day. Love a bit of synthwave. Bloody love it. I want to attempt something a second. I've just, I've just got an idea. You know, sometimes you get an idea in your head and you go, you know what, I'm going to try that. I'm going to get an anastropic noise. I'm going to add loads of the X amount, so it's quite bitty like that. And then I'm going to go to um, Cartesians of Polar. There you go. Pretty much got what I wanted almost straight away. I like it when that happens. There. Couldn't have asked for much better, that. Oh good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you, matey. I've just started. Literally just started. Um, I've run out of coffee already, though, which is sad. I should have bought a water, and I didn't. So at some point, I might disappear and grab a water. But uh, yeah, no, I'm good, thank you. I finished work a little bit later than normal today, but it was still nice to have. A very, I had a very quick go of war zone before starting here. I just thought, I'm going to jump on. I'm just going to have no faffing. I'm going to attempt to just land hot and see what I can do. So I landed Superstore pretty much every time, or that kind of area. And you know what, I did alright. In that last game I just played, I ended up with... Uh, it was eight... I think it was eight or nine kills. And I was made up because it was just... It was going pretty well, I was feeling it, and I wanted to carry on. But no, I had to peel myself away and come and do this, which is fine. I enjoy doing this. Uh, I was just... I was enjoying that a bit more. So I'm probably going to jump back on that after the stream. For a little bit, maybe. Or well, probably not actually thinking about it. It'll be late. I don't know. Let's see where the night takes us. Let's just see where the night takes us. Uh, yeah, that's the one. I, I, well, I tried landing there. That's my favourite place to land. 
Uh, I did it once there. Uh, like, properly, and I got loads of people. I got like seven, I think. Which I know isn't loads of good people, but to me, that was quite a few. Um, but the problem is, it kept getting landed on by other people. And at one point, I took out a team twice who kept landing there. I'm like, this is my building. But then, they killed me, and I was like, oh, you know what, I'm going somewhere else. So yeah, I, I was doing alright for a bit. I was holding my own, as they say. Right, let's start placing this where we want it. Uh, let's use a transform for that. That's cool shape, isn't it? Uh, right, yeah, we don't want this to, to tile. We want to keep it single. We're going to tell this to tile, though, not this, because we might want to use this later for something that does tile. So this is quite a tall shape, so we're going to split this into sort of bits. So let's move this down here. Something like that should be enough space. If we could fit four of these on it. Let's try and get a little bit more. We can always increase it all overall later, can't we? The only problem might be resolution. Because, like I said, I can't use 4K textures on this because my computer will melt. Um, but a 2K texture should hold up for what we're trying to do with it. Now we've got that. Um, let's get ourselves... Let's see. Can I actually use this to generate the, the field? I think I might be able to. Let me just give this a quick try. I'm feeling experimental today, folks. I'm feeling like I want to try some new things. And that's what I'm going to do. Stripes... First things first, let's get this field sorted. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Whoops. That was the wrong way, wasn't it? Shoo. Loads of stripes. Lovely. Alright, that's good. I like that stripe thing. And then we're going to get this. Uh, we're going to, same again, transform this. Doo -doo. Uh, right, I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to tell this to subtract. That roughly gives me what I want. It's not perfect. But if we get a bevel, a cheeky little bevel, on this. It's tell it to go inwards, just... Uh, sorry, outwards, just oh so slightly, so it cuts into the black. Just a little bit. There you go. And now that will have the opposite effect of what I wanted multiply there we go now that just puts some little lines in between the uh the bits you know what i'm saying so let me just see if this works now we want this to have a lower um wait lower Yeah, we want this to be lower to the ground, so we want it to have a, a lower value, but we also want to mask this out using this. So let's try that now, shall we? Uh, out of interest, if this is so bitty, I'll have to have your tea, see you in a bit. Okay, mate, no worry. Uh, no worries, enjoy your tea. Oh, there you go, yeah, it's so bitty that we can just use it as a mask. Nice. So that there. I'll uh, we'll just have to copy it, and there you go. Not a problem. That works. Okay, sweet. We're on to a winner, folks. So let's just quickly see how this looks in 3D. Uh, in the 3D view, because... This could be curious if this works out well. I'm, I'm very curious about this. I'm assuming a lot of people would have thought the same thing about signs. I've never seen this one, by the way. It's meant to be good, I think. I realised whilst talking, I've not actually heard many people say it is good. I think I heard one person say it was good once. That's good enough for me. That's what I call a recommendation. Ooh, fancy. Look at that. We can reduce the strength of the uh, parallax for starters. We don't need it for five. Two. I think two will do as nicely for what we're after. And then we can just lower the things individually. So let's lower the height on the, um, the wheat. Oh, 
Although we want the wheat to be higher than the middle bit. So let's just change the overall, um, the comparative height between them. That's better. Okay, now we can do the same thing for the wheel. So we're going to use different values. So we want this to be lower than the rest. So see, if we just reduce the difference between the black and white levels, it makes it just less extreme, which is nice. And then we can move both of those as a whole to control the overall height of it. But I don't think we need to, I think that's okay. So let's just focus on getting this done with the other shapes and then we'll think about other stuff. But for now, this is okay. So uh, yeah, shape one, done. A circle. Who can't figure out a circle? I know I can, and that's good. I like being able to figure out circles. So let's make this next shape. This next one's a little bit more intriguing. It's like a key, I think. Um, so have any of you guys seen Signs? I've never watched it. I think, is it an M. Night Shyamalan film? And I think, is it the one with Mel Gibson in it, or is it Tom Cruise? Not Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks. I remember somebody sort of like old school being in it. I just don't remember who. Um, okay, let's work on the next shape. What we can do, actually, we can move this right down because we can have the wheat be added at the end and add all the shapes together first and put that on top so that they're all the same level because they're all the same height so if we do it that way it will save us a lot of work later on so let's move that there so that we know that that's what that's for um, and then this is the mask we're going to have this is the combined shapes we're going to have so we should be okay with this let me see now so we've got the circle let's get the key uh, duplicate this actually I don't need to duplicate that I'm going to just transform it Actually, well, I need to duplicate it. Yeah, I'm doing some strange stuff with this, you see, so I might need to duplicate it, but we'll see in a second. Um, for now, let's just get the shape that we want. Okay, so we don't want it tiling. Let's turn tile off there, and then we want it to be set to uh, max lighting so we can see where it's going it's a little bit smaller than the one above it it's about that close so we should be about halfway at the body now which we are kind of let me get a bit closer okay that's about right so let's use that and then we can go and apply the same thing to it here uh, let me just have a quick look a second Right, okay. Go and do this. Now, I'm going to ap apply the same transform for this shape to the results of this so that I can have the right size. So now we actually get it in that circle as opposed to that circle just cropping part of the edge. So it works a bit better than you see. And then we get two of them, which is nice. And then what we can do is we can just feed that into this. Feed that into this. And there we go, two shapes. So now we can adjust the shapes to match better, but it's at least given us a placement. Now let me just quickly go and try and make some adjustments to this. Hmm. Okay, so let's add let's add the overall shape to this and then we'll go and we'll fix the shape of the wheat underneath. Excuse me. I always get hiccups doing the, the stream. I don't know why. 
every time it happens. Has anybody got ex any ex explanations as to why somebody might get hiccups uh, during, you know, during streams? It makes no sense to me. All right, so if I get a blend again, I'm going to get another shape. This time I'm going to use the square as it is, pretty much. I'm, well, I'm going to transform it, but I'm going to use a transformation 2D tool. Set it to not tile. I'm going to shrink this bugger down. And what we're going to do is we're going to offset this a little bit. Use a mirror grayscale. That gives us two of them. Uh, and then we're going to use another transform. Do that with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend these two together and then mirror that result. It's a weird way of doing it. I could just, I'm probably just going to use another transform to be honest. There's no reason for me to mirror that. <laughs> it makes sense if there's more of a complex shape. Oh, it saved me a bunch of nodes. But it really doesn't. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get another blend. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get this and duplicate it. Put that there. And then I'm just going to move this over. If you click that, you can go to mirror X. Uh, sorry, mirror Y. Nope. Okay. Don't mind me just being wrong. Like I said, today's one is going to be more about having a bit of fun rather than trying to make some jaw-dropping artwork. To be fair, to a two-hour time limit, you can't make jaw-dropping artwork, really, in design. You can. You can get some nice results, but it depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to achieve realism, two hours isn't really enough. All right, there's that basic shape. Let's just squat these down a bit. Oh, why did I bother doing that? start this little section again because I proper cooked it up. Like I was saying, get the shape in. Uh, then we can sort the rest of the shape out. So it's still a little bit tall. Let's go and just shorten this down. So, um, you know, we could be lazy here. Just reduce, um, reduce the Y. And just scale this one back up. This is a super lazy way of doing it, but it works, doesn't it? Alright, that'll do for now. Um, now let's go and add the stalk underneath it. So, blend. It's going to be a lot of the same kind of thing tonight because it's. We're just making. Basically, making a stencil. It's going to cut out of the wheat and then make sort of the, the wheat pattern like we're going for here. So, it should be interesting to try and achieve this kind of thing. I've never done. I've never done this specific thing before. <laughs> Guess who has? Who can say they've ever done exactly this thing before? It's a weird thing to do. And uh, if, I, if, if you say you've done it, I'm probably going to call you a liar. Not because I think you're a liar. Just because the odds of it actually being true are slim. Hey, you know what? Whatever. Do You do you. If you want to say you've done it, you feel free. Have your moment in the sun. I'm not going to stop you. Right, something like that should do and then we can then c connect that to the circle so we're going to get another transform that way we can control this as a whole shape uh, blend it with this max lighten 
and I'm going to put it where it belongs. That belongs being way smaller, for starters. Okay, something like that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the little uh, semicircular, semicircular shape and cut out the middle. And to do that, it should be fairly straightforward. What we can do is we can get a blend node, uh, we can get our circle, put it there, and just chop half the bottom off. Nice quick way of doing it. And then we get a transform node. I keep calling it a transform node. It's a transformation 2D node, if you want to get really specific about it. And I know some people out there are quite aimly retentive, and they all want to be very specific about it. And that's fine, you can be. I'm just saying that's what it... I just call it transform node because that's what it does. It transforms. Right, so let's get another blend. And this time we're going to subtract this from this. So go to subtract, and then we need to obviously position where it is as well. Uh, wait, it's already a transformation node. Let's just keep using that one. So shrink it right down. Put it where it goes. a little bit higher something like that it's not exact but it's close and then we can plug that into here and see how that looks okay. oh yeah I forgot this is going to be wrong isn't it so let's adjust this now I'm thinking what I can do with this is probably add this on top the standard sh um, direction one so if we just quickly um, Let's move everything over a bit. It's getting a bit messy. Okay, if I get this. I'm going to get this one and put it behind it. Get a transformation 2D node. And then I'm going to use a... Uh, what's it called? A histogram scan. Boom that right up so it's a nice cute little square and there you go. Now this should hopefully give us the kind of things that we want. You know, obviously it's not as tightly packed as that one. But we can use the new transformation node that we've got. And we can shrink it down so it's the right size. So it should hopefully match a bit closer. Now, it's a bit tighter in the width ways, isn't it? So, much like my pants after quarantine. Something like that. Just like it. Okay, then that's the first two shapes done, pretty much. It's not perfect, but it'll do for now. Just see that. So that needs to be bigger, really. Um, the, the fork part at the top. So let's just go scale that up whilst we can. There it is. It's a little squatter, like that. A little more squat, yeah. It's not a squatter, it's not like trying to get a free house. It is more squat, as the cool kids might say. That is well squat. I feel like that would be a future slang. It just fits, you know. But is it going to be a positive or a negative future slang? That's the question. Like, is it going to be like, hey mate, you see Tracy, she's well squat. Meaning, you know, she looks like a bit run down. Or does it mean, oh mate, you've seen Tracy, she's well squat. You know, like, I like her quite a bit. She's rather fancy. Could go either way. I like it when people... Well, that was a weird list, guys. Okay. I like it when people um, sort of evolve the language, but not in an annoying way. Like, it's certain words I just don't like. For example, like when people say, they don't do it much around here, but when people say ream, like, is it ream? I can't remember now. Or peng, you know, that kind of stuff. That bugs me. I don't know why. It's stupid. When I've just said it, I like it when people evolve the language and adjust it. But I guess if it doesn't sound goofy to me, I don't like it. But it might just be because I don't like things like the Only Way is Essex. And they always, they always try and make the wrong words on that. 
And then it works because people are stupid. But anywho, enough about my bitching about British television. Let's get on with the show. Alright, so the next shape is a little more awkward, but still doable. I'm enjoying this one today. This is a, just a fun, minimal pressure one. What did I just do? Clear the thumbnail. It's nice. I don't want to do that. Alright, to fix that, we can just double click all the end results and that'll re relink everything. Okay, save. That's what I wanted to do. I'm glad that wasn't like clear the graph because save should not be next to anything that clears everything. Um, just a second. I'm just going to speak to the lovely, lovely wife and check something. Do, 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 do. I forgot my water you seen. I know she's going to be coming up soon. So I'm sure she'd be nice and bring my water up for me. Could you bring me a water when you come up, please? Thank you. See you on a nice. I say thanks and everything. There you go. Um, okay, so on to the next bit. So we've got two bits down, right? There's two bits done. Two more bits to go. We can do this. I'm feeling confident about it. So let's get the next shape in there. Do, 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 do. So again, starting with a circle. I mean, that's why they call it crop circles, I guess, because they use a lot of circles. It'd be weird if they didn't and they just called it crop circles. Right, let's get a transformation 2D note going. We're going to put this shape in there. And then we're going to get a second one, which can duplicate that one, actually. Hey, beautiful. Did you see my message? Did you see my message? Nope. Okie dokie. Never mind. Right, so we'll get this one, subtract it from this one, and it'll leave us a little hole in the middle. I'm going to change the size of this because we don't want it to be fully massive. It's something along the lines of that, by the looks of it. So keep that for now. We can always adjust it later. That's why it's here. Do that, move it down. And then we are going to add the stick on top. So go to blend. Transform it to the kind of size that we want. So because we told it, told it not to cap, not to tile earlier, it now won't tile here because it's using um, relative to input. So whatever you put in, it will take that method, tiling H and V, no tiling. So this is just grayed out. That doesn't mean it's doing that by default. It just means it's not doing anything to do with that box. But if I set that to absolute, that'll then, sorry, that'll then tile based on what's in that box. But we'll just leave it as relative because it's the one we want right now. So yeah, just a little tidbit, a little bit of a, a little bit of a now you know. Uh, okay, let's get our stick. So transformation 2D node. My watch is going nuts. Let's just silence it. There we go. Yeah, and we're going to get the square from here before. Again, set this to no tiling. Oh, thank you. Hey, she saw it. Oh, that's so much better. Thanks, beautiful. All right, so let's shrink this down. Oh, it's so frustrating. I had this the other day where the, the corner arrow just disappears. For some weird unknown reason, it just does not work anymore. But if I go to another one and then come back, that worked through the day. Nope, still gone. Okay, oh well. We can do it manually, can't we? So we just want to make it skinnier, like that. So max lighten this one. And then we can go and... Actually, we want to move this further down. Because this is quite a long stick. We want to give it space to work. So there's that. And then move this here. Uh, it's a bit shorter, so let's do that. That looks about right, but we can always make adjustments as we go along. 
And now we want to get this kind of arc shape. So to do that, I wonder if we can use a crescent. Let's get a shape. And we can always just use a circle and subtract from that. But let's just try a crescent first. I'm curious. I saw someone use this the other day to make it like a nice leaf shape. But I want to see if I can use it as like a semi, semi-circle kind of thing. So if I do that to it, not transform. I want to use a histogram scan. Mm, that doesn't really work, does it? Interesting shape, though. I like what it creates. It's pretty funky. But no, we don't need that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use this circle again. Oh, I'm going to grab this circle here. Put it there, and I'm going to duplicate that, get a blend. I want to use subtract again, and this time I'm going to just move this up a little bit. Like so, obviously turn off tiling. So I've moved it up a bit, I'm moving it in a bit. And then what I'm going to do is on this node, I'm going to chop off the top half. Uh, sorry, the... Yeah. Swap these around. Come on, brain, do your job. All right, so this one. Yeah, swap them around. Set it to multiply. <coughs> Hang about. Okay, subtract. Get of the blend. We're just gonna be we're gonna be quick and lazy about this. We could do it a different way, but this is the way we're doing it. And then chop off the top. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got the shape that we're after. It's like a sort of a swooping bowl kind of shape. And we can always transform that again to get like a little bit of a more squat version. That's more like it. And then obviously set this to no tiling again. I like that you can do that, like it's a really nice little feature. And then what we want to do now is blend this to the piece that we've already made. And then we can just position it and see where it needs to go. So transformation 2D on that one. This is such a soothing song, I like this. It's called Lust, ironically. Oh, the cat's shouting at the wife because she's getting a bath and he's currently sleeping in the bath. Not like right now, but he likes to sleep in the bath recently. So I can hear him shouting at her like, oi! You in me bath? Get out of me bath! That's my bath, that is. He's a little old man though, so we should just get, give him what he wants, really. He's like 15, which in cat years is about 75, apparently. That shape's pretty funky. Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit warped, but I'm not that bothered about that, to be honest. We're just doing a quick play about, aren't we? That seems about the right size. So let's go plug this in as well so it matches this. Um, <laughs> and he's not happy at all. So yeah, we want to... Um, we want to add this to, to... We want to add a wheat mask to this as well, like we did down here. So to do that, we're going to get a blend node. So we want a circular piece of wheat for that bottom part. So we're going to get that by duplicating this. I'm going to plug the Cartesian to Polar node into that. Uh, there it is. Just so we get the right scale. Where's my piece just gone? There you go. Yeah, then we get the right scale of wheat that I'm after. There we are. And then we can use that. Uh, and we can multiply over the top of that. So you can see obviously it stops at the top there. Uh, but that's okay because we're going to match that up with the other pieces. So. 
Done that again. We're just going to do it here, just so that we're blending all the wheat together. So the other pieces, it's a little more awkward. Because we want to get the straightness of the middle bits, but we also want to get the curve of the sort of semicircular part. So to, do, to achieve that, we can grab this. <laughs> He's not happy at all with that. We're going to grab this one, just like we did before. Grab this, put it there. Set to max lighting so it blends together. And then we're going to use the input from that there. Again, set that to no tiling. <laughs> and now if we put that there, it should... There you go. Yeah, see, it's... It's following that one now, and it's following this one as well. Uh, this one we can do with a stick, so let's get that next. This is what's handy about using a transformation 2D node to create your shapes, is that you can use the same transformation information on a mask that you're using, and it will just carry through. It's super handy. Really nice little workflow, if you ever remember to do it, which I always forget, to be honest. So it's nice that this time it happened to go that way. <laughs> just copy that. So it's nice, nice and quick method of doing it. Max lighten, there we are. Uh, actually, we don't want to max lighten for that one. We want to stomp over that. So if we use the, this as the mask there, set it to copy instead. There you go. That may go too far. Yeah, it goes too far there. So what we need to do is just... Uh, if we grab this, subtract this shape from it, then we can use that. There we go. Yeah, you end up with a lot of nodes, so just try not to get too messy if you can. Move this over the way. Yeah, I know I've said it before, but it's, it's important to try and maintain some kind of housekeeping as you go along. Just so you've got an idea, at least a rough idea in your head. Of what's going where otherwise you're just going to get really messed up with this because i mean we're already getting loads of nodes and we've just done a few basic shapes like that city yesterday because it was all stacks of card it was a million nodes because it's just shape after shape and transformation node after transformation node but that's how it is when you do this so it's not it's not a problem it's just a bit of a pain in the backside that might be too squashed but we'll check in a minute once it's connected, we'll check, and then we can always make adjustments. Uh, I'm actually going to connect this one now, and then I'm going to treat the extra bits as separate parts. So let's do this, put that in there. We'll have to transform this as well, so set this to max lighting. I'm going to save, actually, before I forget. Put a transformation 2D node in there, and then we can position this where we want it to be. So get this. Okay, so I think we're going to be a little bit short of space. So let's um, let's see if we can just quickly adjust this. I'm hoping this doesn't mess too much stuff up. I think I've done it right, so it shouldn't mess this up. Um, where's the other shape gone? If I get a transformation 2D node and just plug it in here, then I can just control this independently. It's a bit of a pain because it gives me the full box, which I don't like, but that's okay. We're just moving it down. So it does it as a whole, so it shouldn't affect everything else. We are going to shrink it down a bit now. Somewhere around there should do nicely. There's also a line between it, so let's put a line in there as well. Yeah, then we can move this one down. Okay, I like that. And now, yeah, this there's a line going straight across it from the wheat part, so let's put the line in here and then that can be out of there, kind of. So we've got a blend node. 
I didn't want to do that. I don't like connecting things straight away. Um, I like to create what I want to create and then connect it. Because it's much quicker to work when you're just computing the 2D node. What was that? She, I don't know what. For some reason, the echoes just started talking, and I can't. I, I don't have a clue what it's saying because I've got headphones on. Um, right, yeah. The. Um, hang on a sec. I got a message. No, I have no messages. Okay. Anywho, yeah. The the wheat. We're just gonna put a line straight across it. That's what I was saying. I was saying about the two D node. So it works better for me if you do all the stuff you want to do before connecting it to the outputs because that way you're just working in 2D and it's a lot quicker to compute whereas if you've got it connected to your 3D then everything you're doing is getting figured out and rendered live and it just it's a lot slower we don't really want to do that so yeah let's just do this let's get ourselves a cheeky little shape uh, I'm going to shrink it oops I'm going to shrink it right down this should actually go to the middle anyway but we, we're not going to be exactly in the middle because we, we weren't specific Zero, zero, 001 and I'm going to give this a slight just the slightest little bit of a bevel in or out I'm not sure yet I think out and then we're going to subtract that from this so we get a slight line now we can control the levels on this just control how high or low that um, that cut is Actually, let's go to max lighting. Actually, I mean, I, I use subtract normally, but I want to control it a bit better. So instead of using subtract, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this. I can do it with the levels, actually. Save as, saves as a node. Oh, it's that one. <laughs> Idiot. Yes, okay, so I've inverted it and now we've set it to uh, min darken. And then we can control the levels to choose how strong or weak that is. that in there okay so it's not perfect but it was all it was a good enough spot all right so let's just transform this now that's an interesting little change of events isn't it look at that i hate when it does that this there is something in designer where there's some sort of glitch where every now and again it just makes a square and i never really know what causes it fixed now just a weird little vendor issue why didn't stop complaining <laughs> cat's complaining about his bath all right anyway next shape um, where are we okay so we've got the halfway point we have got another shape to add to it so let's add this shape in now which we already have we just need to Run this through there. There you go. And now we just need to add the little circles on top and these little bars at the side. And then we can get to colouring. So I think we're doing pretty well time wise. Let's just move these down here so that everything's nice and neat. Like I was saying before, good housekeeping. Just try and maintain it. It's not easy. Uh, you know, but it'll get a lot more confusing if you don't do it as you go along. So we've got our <clears throat> got our base circle at the bottom, which is just a standard shape. I'm going to put it there so it's kind of clear where things are. Then we've got our wheat for the middle shape. So it's our middle shape information over here. We've got our upper shape here. I'm actually going to keep working up. I don't normally do that. I normally work along. 
But if I keep working up, then it's kind of in the order they are in the real shape, if that makes sense. That should be a little bit easier for us. So these next two shapes are going to be a bit of a doddle. I'm actually going to attach them to this because I've left the space here for them. So we can do that and that will save us adding more stuff further down here. It'll just connect through. Um, so I'll treat this as one big shape, but just work on it in parts. Okay, so I'm going to quickly grab a transformation 2D node. <laughs> Imani really wants to get into that bath. And again, set this to not tile. If I use a mirror node, <laughs> she's, I think she's telling the cat to not jump in the bath again. <laughs> he jumped in the other day and freaked himself out. I'm expecting a splash any second now. <laughs> uh, right, so we've got this. Let's get ourselves a blend. Another blend. Put that there, and then I'm going to just add the. Um, a second. I'm going to put this here. No, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to feed the wheat into that again, like we did before. And then I'm going to feed this into the mirror, because that just saves us doing the work twice. That way, we've got it done there. It's ready. Set this to max lighting, and then jobs are good. So let's just adjust where these pieces are, because these are obviously the wrong size. But we only need to adjust one, because it's a symmetrical thing. Put it down there. Move it over. Something. Something like that, I think. Make it a bit smaller, maybe. A bit squatter. Yeah, something like that will do. So just connect that, see how it looks. That looks okay. Maybe make it a bit bigger. It's lost a lot of definition because it's so small, so let's just make it a bit bigger. Bless you. Oh, I actually forgot to... Uh, let's work on this shape first. I forgot to multiply it on top. So delete, delete that for now. Okay, so do it again. Move that there. See what I mean about it being slower once it's reading the 3D view. This is why I normally do it and then connect it. So this is quite an iconic series of shapes. So hopefully it's recognisable what I'm actually doing when, uh, when I put it online and stuff. Because I don't want people being like, it said sign, why have you made a field? It's from the film Signs, isn't it? Okay, so. Get ourselves a duplicate of this. Plug our wheat into this. This time I'm going to duplicate the mirror grayscale. Plug this into it, and then we're going to blend them together. I don't think I need to do this. At the moment, certain I don't, but just put my own mind at ease. I'm doing it. There we go. Nothing spectacular, but it does the job, doesn't it? And then, last shape. So we've just got two more circles to put on top, and then we've got an hour thirteen to texture this bad boy, which shouldn't take that long. Hopefully. We can make some minor adjustments as well as we go along, but for now I'm happy with how this is going. It's going okay. Which reminds me, save. Always save. Especially when you feel like it's going okay, because that is the time when it stops going okay. That's the time when it starts going poorly. Right, so now we're going to get a transformation 2D node. We're going to use the circle from earlier. You don't need to do this when, you make, when you're just making a little test piece like this. You don't need to be worried that much about optimization and things but it's just it's good to get into the mindset of doing that when you're making materials because these get expensive to run 
And especially if you're going to be running it live at runtime, like in Unreal Engine or something using the Substance plugin, then you really need it to be optimized pretty well. Because it's just, it's good. I mean, even if it's just for the ease of use for the artist who's going to be using it, you want to try and make your stuff as easy as used to possible, as easy to use as possible. Unlike the English language, which apparently I struggle with today. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this so I've got the same starting point. So that's a max lighting, and then I'm going to move this up and shrink it down. So let's move this down a bit, to close that gap up a little bit. Okay, and then this top circle is actually a bit smaller. Okay, since we've made that smaller, we can actually move this big one up a little bit again, make a gap slightly bigger, and then make the smaller one the same kind of gap. Okay, that's looking kind of like the shapes that we want. So now what we need to do is just get our wheat on top of that. So same as before, get this, feed the wheat texture into that so it's the same, um, get the circular one this time, feed it into that so it's the same transform. Put that there, set it to multiply. And just replace the connection with this one and then same exactly the same thing again so get this duplicate it grab this put it there grab this and blend them together you do tend to repeat a lot of the same steps using substance designer and sometimes it's even prudent to make your own uh, little mini graphs of things that you do often but i don't do that very often because i tend to often find new ways of working and I, the way I think about it is if, if I just keep making graphs for things that I do all the time I'll become reliant on only using those techniques and not learning new ones there are some things that makes more sense to do it like you know rock generators and that kind of stuff crack generators it's always good to have those kind of things made but yeah don't try try not to be too reliant on pre-made things it's not great in the long run right, let's connect this and we should be done Oh, we need to position this, don't we? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, just move this down a bit. Now we can actually scale it up a little bit more again. Cool. I'm quite happy with that. I think that's that's gone relatively to plan. Let's just go and scale up the archway bit a little bit. that's just cut off that's oh, because I, I need to adjust the transform of the wheat don't I all right so I just did this so where's the wheat uh, the wheat is this part yeah okay so duplicate this plug this into there and just replace that there so that's the knot tile We should be fixed. There you go. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that for a quick little knock-up effect thing. You can see what it's supposed to be. It's obviously not perfect, but let's go add the edge lines in just to give it that sort of field feel, if that makes sense. Field feel. 
give it that fear, the fear, the fear, the fear. You know what I'm saying. So to do that, we're going to get this. We're going to duplicate the line that we've got here. What I'm going to do is we're going to use a transformation 2D node. Move it over here. And it actually tiles on both sides, which is what I want. Should do that nicely. There we are. So now let's just move this over a bit. Actually, move it over, make it wider. So it's kind of like a tractor path. And then I'm going to use a mirror grayscale node on that. Just to put it in the same position on the other side. There we are. So we've got like a farmer's path. It'd be cool to recreate the house in the end, wouldn't it? But we can't really do that. So that's kind of funky. I think it's not, not too far off. Yeah, so let's... Uh, Let's start colouring and then we can call it a night. I think we can do a nice early one today. I like it when this happens. When it's just pure fun. There's no stress. There's no, uh, ooh, you know, what are we going to do next? How are we going to get this to work? It's just boom, boom, boom. That worked. Let's move on. I've also got a bit of a headache, so it's kind of helpful. Oh, the water. I remember now. Water. For some reason, it seems like my ring light is extra light today. I haven't made it extra light, but let's just lower it down one. Hopefully you can still see my pretty face. Uh, but it's just, it was too bright. Making the headache worse. Alright, let's go and start coloring this stuff in, shall we? Make sure this is all okay. Now, theoretically, I think we might be able to color this in one node. Don't hold my words. Don't, don't, don't hold me to it, but I think we can. Let me grab... The almighty gradient node. Gradient map node, excuse me. If I plug this height information into this, and then if I go to gradient editor, and then I click on pick gradient, I can go and drag a line across my reference image, and it will select a bunch of colors from that line. It's not super precise, but it, it should work fairly well for this because it's quite a bitty uh, grayscale image that we're using. So let's just go boop. So it's not great. Let's just lower the precision down. It's way too strong. It's not great, but it's a starting point. See that? Not far off at all, really. Now, I want to make some adjustments. It's got the right colors to it, but because the poster is like in a really yellow, kind of fiery lighting, it looks weird. So if we use an HSL node, we can go in here and we can just desaturate it slightly. Shift the hues, it's not quite so orange. I want to make it more sort of golden. There we go, just like that. I think that's pretty much done. Yeah, that's, there's not much more to say about that one. I think that's it's a nice, simple one. I think we're pretty much done. Maybe just let's just add some... Let's add some noise for the sake of adding some noise, shall we? It's not always a good idea, but let's see how it goes. Obviously, this doesn't look great close up, but it's not meant to. It's meant to look like a thing from a distance. Uh, let's see, what can we add to this? Just to spice it up a little bit. Let's get a blend node. It's kind of... I'm just curious. I'm probably not going to use this, but I want to see what a curvature node, what kind of effect that will have on this. Uh, oh, 
I already made that. Let's make another HSL. Let's make this one a little bit darker. So we'll get that. Use this as a mask. And then let's use a histogram scan just to control which part of this curvature we're actually using as the mask. So I just kind of want little bits of it like that. So just adds a bit of variety to it. There we go. It's not loads, but it just adds a bit more depth in certain places. And we could probably also use a uh, the AO node to have a similar effect, and that way it'll just help increase the shadow areas a little bit. Which should look pretty cool. We could always use a shadows node as well, but I don't think we should on this one. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate the AO node we've already got. Because I don't want to affect that one. That'll mess up the whole image. To be fair, that is a bit strong at the moment. Let's change this. I think that's probably a bit better. And now we can manually darken parts of it using the node. So if we change the, the radius so it's a bit tighter to the shapes like that and then we can use again blend node got to get an HSL blend again I'm going to desaturate it a bit is that working yeah and then darken it a bit as well put this in there I think we actually want to invert that mask yeah See, it just gives us like darker regions where the shadows are. There we are. And that should just be the final kind of pop that we need. We can always lower the strength on that. Really, we should change the color on it as opposed to using the opacity slider. Also, let's adjust the height depth. What's the radius on this? Is it set to 0 0.01? Can we go to 0 0.005? We can. Okay. Does that look better? 0 0.005 or 0 0.01? I think 0 0.01 looks better, doesn't it? Okay, so... I want to say let's leave it there, but there's... Part of me doesn't like a part of it that's gone black. Out of interest, is that there? I want to do this. Okay, the darkest parts of this I want to change of the, the gradient. Oh god, I'm supposed to select that. Hmm. Let's just adjust the how dark I've got some of this. This is probably where it's going too far. So I've got a bit quiet, folks. I was just thinking about something. Just trying to sort this out. In my nog. It's curious how it just doesn't show up sometimes. I think we're looking okay now. Maybe slightly more orange. The the AO was giving it quite a bit of blackness rather than just darkening it, if that makes sense. And we didn't want that. So let's just go and adjust 
the orange a bit, make it a bit stronger again. There you go, it's a bit more golden now. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to call it there, folks. That's a nice, sharp one tonight. My favourite kind. Let's just expand that so you can see what it is. So there we go, that is the result for today's material. The prompt was sign. So we made the field from signs. Why not? It makes perfect sense to me. Don't know about you. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, wait, let's go to our Just Chat screen so that you can see we're going to add a little tick for sign. Abu. There we go. Only six days left, folks. Six. Tomorrow's prompt is going to be game. G-A-M-E. Game. Ooh, game. That'll be interesting. I wonder what we can do for that. Hmm. Anyway. I should be on tomorrow. Uh, if not, I'll let you know on Twitter. Just keep an eye on that. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, folks. And I'll see you all tomorrow or next time. Have a great evening. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye now.